thinking, because I was really curious to see, like, I think each state has its own strategy, right, for whether it's testing or contact tracing or whatever. I mean, really, the federal government is kind of given states sort of the leeway to make plans and strategies they think fit best for them. Um, I don't know how well, how aware you are of what other states are doing, but I, I had reached out to Maryland today to kind of see what their strategy was. Their strategy is like a test for everyone. Why hasn't Pennsylvania adopted something like that? Why aren't we doing a test for everyone? Why aren't we making that something that's accessible? Well, that's, that's a good question. And we like to say that everyone who needs a test has access to a test. The tests are available. Um, the question goes more to if you are the worried well and you just feel like you wanna have a test, uh, there is a test available to you. You may have to pay for it. Uh, you would get that through your provider's office, through your physician. Uh, obviously, Ryan, our focus is on where the disease is and trying to track the disease. And once we know it, do the, con do the case investigation contact tracing and then the mitigation efforts so that we don't spread the disease. Now, there is a symptomatic testing that is done that is valuable to kind of determine where disease may be, because then we, by learning that, then we can really focus in on doing more intensive testing. But each state approaches it a little bit different. Uh, I would also mention to you that, that particularly if you're using the gold standard test, which is a PCR, it's a molecular test, as opposed to the antigen test, it's the much more accurate, the much more expensive, and it also is the test that is fraught with significant supply chain issues. So there is not always reagent to run the tests. There's not always test kits because there may be uh, a shortfall of the plastics that make the tubes. Uh, and we, we face that. So we're trying to balance uh, the, the, the availability of tests to the people who need it most. And, and, and we've been very successful. You know, Ryan, since, uh, since the beginning of testing, we have tested over 5 million people in Pennsylvania. That's like 40% of the population. And, and that is significant. And obviously, with all those tests, depending upon what the positivity rate is, and, and you, you heard uh, the, the latest is with 7, 000, over 7,000 cases. I mean, it's a dangerous time. So we're doing the contact tracing of those cases, again, to control the disease. So again, testing is important. Um, how you approach it, there are different met methodologies. And Pennsylvania's approach is very sound. Yeah, I think there there's a strategy right now that doesn't seem like it's Pennsylvania's where you just throw everything at the wall and hope that something sticks. You yourself acknowledge that asymptomatic spread is a real thing and it is a major concern. Why then not just throw everything you got at? It? You know what I mean? With the antigen testing and, and maybe testing that's a little more unreliable. Why not just throw everything at it? Well, that's, that's a good question. And um, if there were enough tests to do that, that that would be that is the shotgun approach that that many people would like to do because you you spread out the testing and you can identify all the diseases, but you have to understand now the federal government purchased um, uh, about 150 million of the Binex Now antigen rapid tests and 50 million of those were directly shipped from Abbott to uh, to, to targeted groups in in the country. And of the 100 million tests that are left over, Pennsylvania gets a share of that based on a per capita, the 3.85 million that we talk about, which equates to about 250,000 tests a week. Now that sounds good, although that's certainly not a lot of tests for uh, you know 12.7 million people in Pennsylvania. The other confounding factor, Ryan, is that the um, the allocation has been um, has been very, um, I'm trying to find the word to describe it, but it has been very inconsistent. So there are weeks we've had as little as 50,000 and some weeks 160,000. 
So it's really hard to do, as you described, that universal or shotgun approach uh, if you don't have the test to do it. Why do you think other, other states have been able to do it? Do you think it's because they have less people? Um, you know, what, what do you I, think, where's that kind of fall there? Like a Maryland and Delaware are significantly smaller than we are. Do you think that's why maybe we see it there and we don't see it here? Um, it, it, it could be a, a, a factor of that in terms of the size. It could be a factor of how they access their tests, what tests they're using. And again, not, not knowing whether we're talking about the molecular test or the antigen test, it does make a difference because obviously um, a- antigen tests right now are becoming more readily available. And I think as the future goes, you're going to see more antigen tests. So you may, may see that approach even more. But I wanna, I wanna mention something to you though, the fact that, that we're not doing the universal testing as you described, the shotgun approach, doesn't mean we're not controlling disease because Pennsylvania is. I mean, we're, you, you don't see the long lines, uh, the cases are up, but we continue to, to uh, respond in a robust manner uh, and I'm, I, you know, I'm very confident that we're going to be able to do a really good job as we move forward. You're going to see more testing available uh, as early as uh, three weeks from now, because I'm going to be expanding the testing sites significantly. But, but, we, but I can't promise you at this point in time that the worried will be able to, will be able to go get a free test at this time. Yeah, I mean, I think it is fair to say that really the end goal for you is, is for anybody and, and everybody to be able to get a test when you can. You're just saying we're not there. We're not there yet. Yeah. You're a saint. Thanks for doing that. I appreciate it. I just, I had, they, they were pushing me to, to ask what other States are doing. And I'm like, yeah, it's fair to say Mer- like Delaware and New Jersey are doing that in Maryland, but start looking at their size and then like where they're doing it. Like, okay, yeah, sure. They're doing it in Prince George's County or Annapolis yeah. and, and Arundel County, but Maybe they're pumping all their resources into these ma- major urban centers. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not sure what exactly their approach is. I just know that, like, I guess maybe if you're a Pennsylvanian and you're just like, what are they? Why are they doing that in Maryland and we're not doing here? I guess it would just be deceiving. So it's apples to oranges. I think that's part of the problem too. It is right. And if you think about Pennsylvania, you see one state, you see one state. I mean, Pennsylvania has a T section of the state right. that that has less population, uh, less infrastructure, great places to live, but but the right. testing may not be as readily available as they are in the urban, the southwest, the southeast, uh, the northeast, etc. So you really have to take the demographics uh, and put them into into consideration in terms of how you're moving forward. Yeah, it's it's.